Okay, so our next uh, topic is work, power, and efficiency. Uh, work, we have a little formula for that. Work is uh, force times distance. So if something is exerting a force and moving something a distance, we would say work was done. A um, little different than like I went to my job and I made some money, I did some work. Or even like I worked out really hard in the gym and I sweated a lot and I did work. Technically in science, something's got to move a distance um, after force is exerted on it to have done work. Um, so this is also related to energy. Your units are going to be joules, J for joules. Um, and if work is done on a system, energy is changing as well, so work and energy are very much related. Uh, note that we have a, a W here. We already had W for weight, so just be a little careful there. This W is work. Uh, but note, if there's no movement, there is no work. So I can say, you know, I push on the board, you know, really hard. I'm trying really hard. I'm exerting a lot of force. I'm pushing hard. Um, but am I doing any work? Well, even though I might have a really big force, if I'm not moving anything a distance, then no, technically I'm not doing any work. So we have a couple problems. It says a lever is used to raise a 15 Newton rock. So note Newtons, you know, that's a unit of force. Two meters above the ground, what was the work done by the lever? Okay, well, what was the force exerted by the lever? 15 Newtons. What was the distance the object moved? Two meters. We are in standard metric units, so that's fine. 30 joules of work was done uh, by the lever. And note, of course, now that rock would have gained some potential energy, so work always relates to changing energy. Another question says a robber tries to pry open a safe. He uses 60 newtons of force on a crowbar, but the crowbar won't budge. How much work was done? Well, I do know the force number 60, sure. But if there was no distance, it doesn't matter how hard that guy is trying. If something doesn't move a distance, we don't say work was done. So that would be just zero joules. All right, power is then a measure of how quickly you do work. So we've got work over time, not weight over time, but work over time. Um, and your units here are watts. You may have heard that before, but now another W. So the unit is W for watts. This W is W for work, not to be confused with W for weight. Um, but how quickly you can do something, how quickly that robber could pry open the safe, or how quickly that lever could lift up the rock, that's going to explain how powerful that thing is. Um, you maybe are familiar with horsepower. One horsepower is about 746 watts. And that you know, truly did come from the measure of a horse, uh, like a horse pulling a cart way back in the day. And we still tie it into things today, like cars. Um, a car requires 600,000 joules of work to accelerate for 12 seconds. How much power does the car have? Well, if you know the work, 600,000 joules of work, that's going to go on the top. Your time, seconds is standard metric units, so that'll go on the bottom. Um, and you get about 50,000 watts. Now, just FYI, this I just converted a second ago, was about 67 horsepower, which is way low for a NASCAR. Um, they can be up to 750 horsepower. So this is really low. All right, and then lastly, efficiency. Um, we know that nothing is truly 100% efficient. You know, certain things can be more or less efficient, but we could never get really a 100% efficient machine. Um, we always get out a little less than what we put in. So efficient machines are going to transfer most of that input work, input meaning you know, what goes into the system, possibly what a person is doing, um, to as much output work as possible. But if there's moving parts, there's always going to be some friction. If there's anything rubbing together at all, uh, some energy is going to be lost to heat, um, thermal energy, which we know is really a form of kinetic energy of atoms and molecules moving a little faster. But anything moving parts is going to lose some energy to heat through friction. But your efficiency formula is work output divided by work input, and then just to make that a hundred or to make that a percent times one hundred percent. So work output is what the machine does, work input is what was put in, again it could be something you were doing, it could be some kind of um, 
electrical work, electrical energy. Uh, here's a little problem with the pulley. It says a pulley is used to raise a crate. The output work of the pulley is 150 joules and the work put in is 200 joules. So maybe I'm using 200 joules of work uh, to raise up something with this pulley, but it's not exactly putting out 200 joules. For a lot of our pulley problems, we'll kind of assume that the input is equal to the output. What I put in equals what comes out. Um, but in reality, of course, you know, pulleys got lots of moving parts. There's uh, ropes rubbing over those pulleys. There's going to be some friction and energy loss. So we could say that the, the work output was 150, work in was 200, so you just got to make that fraction. 150 over 200, you know, we know is a fraction of 3 fourths, uh, which better give you, you know, 0.75, and then just make that a percent. You guys know to move your decimal to make something a percent, so that'd be a 75% efficient machine. Okay, and that is that whole section of notes.